After working behind the scenes on beauty brands for the past years, I have definitely shifted how I spend my money on skincare. I'm going to share with you the products where I think you should save and where I think it's worth splurging. Hi, I'm Amy and I have been working in the beauty industry for the last 10 years. And I started this channel in order to share tips and tricks that I've learned from working behind the scenes and then also just through my own trial and error in my 20s and early 30s. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please subscribe and keep watching. After college, I first started working at an advertising agency where I was working on brands like Schick Razors and what I was doing was working with a team that was developing the TV, print, and digital advertising. After a few years of doing that, I decided I really wanted to go brand side and actually work for a specific brand. So I went to business school and then after I graduated, I got my job at CoverGirl. So I've worked at CoverGirl for the last five and a half years in various positions and currently I am the senior global brand manager for our face products. And what that means is I lead the development of our new products for CoverGirl in face. So foundations, blushes, concealers, primers, all of that stuff. Because of my experience working for brands, I really do know a lot about the formulas and I know how similar they can very often be. Working behind the scenes has also given me the ability to really understand claims testing and how brands make the claims that they make. We are very lucky that at this point, the science behind skincare and really the foundational products that are going to make the biggest difference in your skin, your moisturizer, your cleanser, your SPF, and retinoids, those are really the four that will make the biggest difference and that are the most important. These foundational products are all available at accessible price points now. You don't have to pay more in order to get a formula that works well. There are a few instances where I think that certain formulations are worth splurging and paying more for, and I'll get into that, but I think in general it's important to note that a product being more expensive does not mean that it's going to work better. Personally, my priority when purchasing skincare products is that they're going to make a difference in my skin. Even if the formulas are just as good when they're more affordable, you are paying for a brand and prestige and an experience. So I do understand that some people that appeals to, but for me, I'm really more focused on what can I do to really make my skin the healthiest it can be versus that luxury experience. That could definitely change, but that's just where I'm at right now. First up, we're gonna talk about moisturizer and here I say you should save. There are so many amazing affordable moisturizers and honestly I find that the more expensive ones that I've tried don't moisturize any better at all. The more expensive moisturizers that are from those luxury brands, they often have just more expensive fancy packaging and then they also very often have very nice luxurious fragrances. It's important to note that those fragrances, they might elevate your experience and if you're looking for that, that's great, but those fragrances also increase your chances of irritation. Because irritation can cause redness, dryness, flaking, breakouts, it can cause a whole host of issues. I personally would rather choose fragrance-free where possible so that doesn't even appeal to me anyway. And with moisturizers, really the amazing ingredients that you need in order to hydrate your skin, to soften your skin, and then to seal in the moisture, kind of the three main benefits of a moisturizer, those ingredients that do those things are all available at affordable price points. So you don't need to pay more to get certain really expensive ingredients. You can really get a great moisturizer that's going to hydrate your skin and moisturize it super well at affordable price points. I've got so many favorite affordable moisturizers with various textures and for different skin types. So I'll definitely link a bunch in the description box below. And for all of the categories I'm gonna go through, I will include links to some of my favorite products, whether they're affordable or if they're the splurge items. But definitely let me know if you want me to do a deep dive into any of these categories just to talk about my favorites, why I love them, and why they're so great. Next up we have cleanser. And here I say you should save. Cleanser is another place that is not worth splurging in my opinion for a couple reasons. There are a lot of amazing affordable formulas. You can get every different format or texture or experience that you're looking for. So whether you're looking for a foaming cleanser, a hydrating cleanser, more of a lotiony texture, more of a jelly texture, cleansing oil, you can find all of these at an affordable price point. And with cleanser, really the most important thing is that you're not going to overly strip your skin. You don't need to use any fancy actives in your cleanser. Pretty much any expensive actives that are put into your cleanser are just going to wash off your face and down the drain. There are a few exceptions for actives in cleansers with beta hydroxy acid, also known as salicylic acid, and with benzoyl peroxide. These are two ingredients that are actually great to be used in cleansers. And that's because they can allow you to get the benefits of this ingredient 
while using it with a short contact time, which helps reduce the chances of irritation that is commonly associated with these ingredients. If you are someone who is sensitive, but you wanna try using salicylic acid to reduce your oiliness or to target acne, or you wanna use benzoyl peroxide, another great ingredient for targeting acne, a cleanser is a great way to get the benefits of that ingredient, but you rinse it off so that can help reduce a bit of the irritation that you might get from using that ingredient. With those two ingredients, they do work as actives and cleansers. You do wanna use those cleansers a bit differently I can go into specifics of how you use those cleansers if you'd like. Those cleansers are both available at very affordable price points. I will link some below. So overall, I don't see any need to splurge on a cleanser. Next up, we have SPF or sunscreen. Now, with SPF, I'm kind of in between save and splurge. For me personally, I prefer to save on sunscreen. I personally prefer to find affordable SPF formulas that I love so that I don't have to feel stingy about applying sunscreen generously every day. I see sunscreen as really my armor against aging and I don't want to have to feel like I have to savor every pump of formula. I prefer to find affordable formulas that I can really slather on and then I don't have to feel bad about repurchasing them every month or two in order to make sure that I'm really properly protecting my skin. That being said, because sunscreen is the most important product that you wear every single day, it is really important to find a formula that you enjoy applying and that you will actually use every day. So if you only enjoy a formula that is a bit pricey, in that case, I say it is worth splurging just to make sure that you're going to actually apply and wear your sunscreen every day. One tip for spending on sunscreen, if you have an HSA or an FSA account through your health insurance, sunscreen should be covered. So you should be able to use your HSA or your FSA account or debit cards in order to buy your sunscreen. I personally use my HSA card when I buy sunscreen either at the drugstore or when I buy it on sites like Amazon, which have sort of an HSA, FSA store on their site. Next, we have retinoids. Here, I'm going to say save. In general, you do not need to splurge in order to get a great retinol or retinoid product. If you're not very familiar with what a retinoid or a retinol is, I'll include a link somewhere on the screen or in the description box below to my overview guide to retinoids because it just explains what they are, why they're so great, how to choose a product, how to get started, and how to apply. So definitely check that out if you are not super familiar with this ingredient. With retinoids, you don't have to splurge, but they are a bit tricky to formulate with, so you do wanna take a little bit of care when you're choosing a formula. What I mean by that is if you're choosing a retinol product, because retinols are not regulated by the FDA, the brands producing them don't have to demonstrate the product's efficacy or stability. I really recommend sticking with a product from one of the larger beauty companies that has a long-standing track record of retinol development. I'll include links to my favorite retinols that meet that criteria below. And as I said, you don't need to splurge. So those formulas can be quite affordable. These are a treatment so they are not quite as cheap as a cleanser or a moisturizer because you are paying for an active ingredient but they're still not going to break the bank at all. Now, if you're moving on to something stronger than a retinol, so something like a retinoic acid, there are two options, which are the two options that I recommend as the strongest retinoid over the counter, and these are also quite affordable. These are the two formulations of adapalene, which is an FDA-approved treatment for acne, and adapalene also has a lot of research to support its efficacy for improving sun damage, so it targets anti-aging as well. Those are around $30 to $35, not quite as cheap, as some of the retinol formulations, but still quite affordable, and that's really the strongest and the best retinoid you can get. So rather than buying a super expensive retinol product from a very fancy luxury brand, if you're trying to get the strongest retinoid, and I really recommend going with one of the Adapalene products from Different or La Roche-Posay, which are quite affordable and are the over-the-counter retinoids that have by far the most clinically backed support. If you do prefer to go for a prescription retinoid, it can get a little bit more pricey. I currently use a prescription retinoid called Tazerotine and it cost me about $65, but I would say each tube lasts me about six months, so it's really not that terrible. Also, this is kind of just making me think, if you are interested in buying the Adapalene, which is the strongest retinoid you can get over the counter, because that is an FDA approved treatment for acne, I believe you might be able to use your HSA or FSA card for that as well. So just another way to use your pre-tax money on some skincare. Next, we have eye cream. 
Once again, I'm gonna say save. I don't think it's worth splurging on an expensive eye cream. An eye cream really is not a necessary part of your skincare routine. Using a regular moisturizer in this area is more than adequate. Very often, brands take a formula that is very similar to their face moisturizer, package it into a smaller pack, and then charge you more for it as an eye cream. I don't have personal experience with this, but I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of brands do. So I really don't think you need to be spending a lot on a fancy eye cream. That being said, eye creams are not bad. If you have one that you love or you're seeing great results, definitely keep using it. For me, I actually use a very affordable eye cream, which isn't really an eye cream at all. I use this just at night, either Vaseline or the CeraVe healing ointment. Because I have dry skin, my biggest concern around my sensitive eye area is really just sealing in moisture as much as possible to keep that area from getting dry overnight while I sleep. The best thing for that is really an ingredient like petrolatum. It is an FDA approved ingredient for being a skin protectant and it is what dermatologists recommend for cuts, for healing skin. It's really a skin protectant and a skin healer because it helps seal in that moisture which allows your skin to heal. And that is a very affordable eye cream option for you. I will warn you though, if you're prone to milia, which are those little white bumps around your eyes, then you probably wanna skip using an ointment in this area because it can exacerbate that or make that problem worse. Eye creams, if you wanna use one, great. I wouldn't spend a lot on one unless you really have found an expensive formula that's showing you amazing results. Then I would save here and use something like your basic moisturizer or an ointment. Next we have exfoliating acids. Here I'm going to say, you guessed it, save. Once again, you definitely don't need to splurge on exfoliating acid products. There are plenty of affordable formulas that work well. I remember when I first got interested in exfoliating acids, I started using those Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads and I didn't really know exactly what was in them, but I was spending $80 a month using those pads because I saw an influencer talking about them and I was like, I need to get glowing skin. I need to use this every single day and I'm gonna spend $80 a month, even though I could barely afford it. And in reality, looking back, I'm horrified because Using those pads every night is actually extremely irritating. I was also using those while using retinoids at the same time because I just didn't know any better. I was definitely a victim of thinking I had to splurge in order to get amazing skin and to get these benefits that I wanted. But in reality, a lot of that is branding and marketing. And when you actually look at the ingredients and you understand what you're specifically trying to target and what ingredients are going to make a difference, you can often find affordable formulas that will do just the same thing and they just don't have the brand name associated. That being said, there definitely are more elegant and more complex formulas in this category. And some people might think it's worth splurging in order to get either added ingredients or a more elevated experience here. I actually do have a few exfoliating acid products that are on the pricier side, but because I'm only using an exfoliating acid max one to maybe two times a week, I don't mind as much buying an expensive formula because it's going to last me a lot longer. It's not something that I'm going through in large quantities like my moisturizers, cleansers, sunscreen. I will link some below that are affordable, but also some of the more expensive ones that I enjoy. But again, this is not a place you have to splurge. This is more of like splurge if you want to. Now we're gonna talk vitamin C. It's kind of in between the save and splurge. So let me explain. Vitamin C is notoriously difficult to formulate. Basically the one form of vitamin C that has the most research and data proving its efficacy is ascorbic acid. But ascorbic acid is very difficult to make stable in a formula and it's also difficult to make it penetrate your skin. So if you're using an ascorbic acid product, it's hard to know that that is really going to penetrate into your skin and start building collagen and brightening your skin and giving you all the benefits that you would like. There really is only one gold standard product in this category from my perspective, which is the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic Serum. This is a patented formula, and it really is one of the only formulas that I'm aware of that has a bunch of data to show that the vitamin C remains stable in the packaging and in the formula, and then the vitamin C penetrates and can actually boost collagen production and make a difference in your skin. However, because this is a patented formula, it does cost $169, and there aren't any exact dupes of this. So if you really want to use the gold standard, you're gonna have to splurge. I have a lot of friends who by this formula and love it and love the results. I have used one full bottle in the past and I really didn't see enough benefits in order for me to feel like I could continue paying that much. 
there are a bunch of similar products that have very similar ingredients but maybe a slightly different pH level or slightly different percentages because of the patent that I think are great options if you're looking to save. Splurge here if you really want to make sure you're using the one gold standard product but if you're looking to save, I'll include some options below for you. Next we have Botox. If you guessed it, this is where I'm recommending that you splurge. Now I'm not recommending you need Botox, but if you are going to splurge on something, definitely splurge on Botox. You don't want to be skimping here because this is a serious procedure. There are serious side effects. You don't want to be trying to get the cheapo deal if you're going to go get Botox. But one of the main reasons that I like to save on all my skincare products is because I really want to have the money and feel okay spending on Botox. Skincare products can make a huge difference in the appearance of your skin, especially if you start wearing sunscreen and you start using retinoids. You can improve the look of fine lines and wrinkles. You can help with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, Spots, uneven tone, uneven texture. You can really change your skin. But the dynamic lines that you create from making expressions on your face, you really can't prevent those with a topical product. If you want to prevent or get rid of those dynamic lines, you really need to splurge on Botox. I love to save on everything else so that I don't mind spending a lot on my Botox. I go to Peachy, I pay $395. I started when I was 27 and I've been going twice a year. I really enjoy it right now, so it's definitely something that is an important part of my routine. Okay, so that is it. I hope this helped you see that you don't need to spend a lot to have amazing skincare products and to have a really great routine that gives you healthy skin. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And in the comments, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover next.